Hi, good morning. My name is Chips Guevara. Uh, I'm a mechanical engineer and I founded uh, my company called Energy Systems. Okay, uh, I'm here to talk about my veggie oil jeepney project. Uh, in a nutshell, the veggie oil jeepney project uh, is, it aims to convert uh, the diesel engines of a jeepney to allow them to run in vegetable oil. Okay, how did I start with this idea? Okay. Um, I was studying at Manchester Business School, and just like uh, Michi Ferriols, uh, you know, I, I was there contemplating of, of what to do after. I, I was working for a company. Uh, I was actually working for Louis Vuitton, Mott, Tennessee, and um, I wanted to go back. I wanted to go back to the Philippines to try to do something for the country. And so I wanted to be part of the brain gain movement, not the brain drain. Uh, Michi talked about uh, the brain drain. I wanted to do the opposite. So I, I transplanted my brain back to the Philippines. Okay, and um, when I got home, my dad had also just fully retired. And he had spent a lot of time on the internet feeding his mind. And he came across, he came across a uh, technology called a straight vegetable oil system. Uh, it's a conversion kit that you install in a diesel engine that allows it to run in vegetable oil. So um, my dad said, well, you know, why don't we try being distributors of one of the technology providers? So we went to uh, Massachusetts. Uh, my sisters were living in Boston. Uh, um, and, um, and we talked to a supplier there. And we, they, basically, they said they don't want any distributors outside the US. So we just bought a unit, uh, a conversion kit. I brought it home. And we installed it in an old Benz, which it's parked outside. You'll see it later. Um, and as soon as we installed it, sorry, there, as soon as we installed it, it, it actually worked uh, to my surprise. <laughs> you know, I, I was very skeptical at the beginning and the car ran very smoothly. Um, and so I, I started to study it uh, because I'm a mechanical engineer. I was able to um, reverse engineer the whole thing. Um, and uh, as we, um, as we realized the technology works and we were confident about the technology, um, we decided to develop the business model. And part of developing the business model is choosing a target market. Okay? And so uh, we, we were trying to decide where, who we were going to sell the technology to. And the criteria for choosing, um, number one, it had to provide volume. Uh, it had to provide critical mass to make it um, worth our while. Right? But the other criteria we added was it had to provide the greatest benefit for the greatest number of people in need. Okay? So with, with this in mind, we chose the jeepneys. And why jeepneys? Why jeepneys? Uh, because the, um, number one, the jeepney drivers are, the mo are directly affected by rising petroleum prices. Every time the, the diesel price goes up, their income drops, okay? And that happens every time it goes up, and it's been going up for many years now, okay? Number two, um, jeepneys have a very large carbon footprint, okay? Uh, because of the volume they, uh, of fuel they, they use. We have about one million jeepneys flying the, flying the Philippines now, the streets of the Philippines, okay? And number three, jeepneys, uh, they, they cause so much air pollution. I think all of you know and realize that, that jeepneys, uh, because of the poor running condition, they, they, they um, are a major contributor of air pollution in the country. Okay? So I, I decided to start on my, uh, developing my own design uh, because the, the American design that I looked at, uh, I felt was, was not uh, um, uh, appropriate for the Philippine conditions and, and there were a lot of inefficiencies, so I, I started to develop my own design. Uh, and then I patented them. I have two patents now on it. Um, so, so I came up uh, with a simple name. I just call it a, a veggie oil car system. It's a conversion kit for diesel engines to run vegetable oil. Okay? And by vegetable oil, um, we mean any plant, sorry, we mean any plant oil, okay? Any oil that's derived from a plant. And uh, so, so coconut oil, palm oil, soya oil, olive oil, corn oil, all of these can be classified as vegetable oils and can be used in this system. 
Right now, I'm using used cooking oil because it's the most economically feasible uh, uh, oil that I can uh, that I have access to. Okay. Um, okay. The properties of vegetable oil. The the reason why um, uh, we cannot use it directly in a diesel engine is uh, number one. Yeah, number one is the high viscosity. Okay, vegetable oil is is highly viscous. It's it's very thick. It doesn't run as freely uh, through the fuel lines. And by the time it reaches the fuel filter, it gets stuck. Okay. Number two is the high flash point. Okay, a flash point temperature is the temperature at which the fuel will combust. Okay, all of you have probably tried frying an egg. And you know that uh, cooking oil at room temperature is not combustible. You can throw a match at it. It's not going to burst into flames. The match will extinguish. Okay? Uh, but sometimes when you're cooking, the frying pan catches fire. And that's because the, the oil had reached the flash point temperature already. Okay? Um, so basically, to address these two issues, we simply have to heat the vegetable oil. By heating the vegetable oil, we lower the viscosity. But when, you, when you put oil in a frying pan, as soon as it's hot, it becomes very free-flowing. That's because the viscosity is reduced when it's hotter. And we also bring the temperature closer to flash point. Okay, so by the time, uh, the, the, the flash point temperature of coconut oil is about 300 degrees centigrade. So if we bring the temperature closer to that, by the time it reaches the combustion chamber, it's easily combustible. Okay. Okay, this is what the veggie oil car system looks like. So on the left side, you'll see the engine block. That's your engine. On the right side, you'll have, see the fuel tank. Okay, and um, we simply, uh, to heat the vegetable oil, sorry, this thing's not. Yeah, we, sim we simply use the heat from the engine. The heat is already being thrown away. We recover that heat and we use it for the engine. Okay. Um, so there are a lot of benefits by using vegetable oil as a fuel. Uh, and let's start with the economic benefits. Okay. The price of diesel right now is 41 pesos uh, per liter. Um, and then the price uh, I, I'm able to sell the waste vegetable oil is 30 pesos per liter. Sorry. The savings is 11 pesos. Uh, you just subtract. So a typical jeepney would consume 25 liters a day. Uh, so the savings per day, you just multiply the uh, savings per liter times 25 liters is 275 pesos. Okay? If you compare that to um, a jeepney, a daily, the daily uh, income of a jeepney driver who earns about, on the average, maybe 500 pesos, adding 275 pesos on their income would drastically improve their lifestyle. Okay? Uh, the, so the savings per month is 6,600. And the savings per year is 79,200. Okay? Um, so there's really a tremendous amount of savings that can be achieved. Okay? Uh, but people ask, uh, how much does the kit cost? Okay, we package it at 60,000 pesos. Um, the, the conversion kit is actually much cheaper. But uh, we have to assume that uh, many of the jeepney drivers, uh, jeepney, the jeepneys, the engines, are not in good running condition. And we have to put it back into good running condition. So we made an uh, allocation for that. Uh, so that we package it at 60,000 pesos. So you divide that by the uh, monthly fuel savings. And you get a payback period of nine months. So nine months, after nine months, the, the, the whole... Uh, um, investment is already fully paid for, and the fuel savings can be uh, enjoyed after that. Okay, uh, but of course, uh, jeepney operators don't have sixty thousand pesos lying around the house, um, so we have to couple it with microfinancing. Okay, and the monthly, so we have we computed the monthly fuel savings. Um, th this is just what I had in my mind. You know, we haven't really finalized anything with any microfinancer. But the monthly installment plan, I think, should be around 
5,600 um, for an 18-month uh, plan. So, the, so immediately, uh, they have an additional cash flow of 1,000. So their monthly fuel savings, only a portion of that, they will have to allocate uh, for the installment plan. The rest they get to keep in their pocket. Okay. So the, um, the GT driver or the GT operator doesn't have to shell out any cash from the very beginning. From the very beginning, they start enjoying the, the economic benefits. Okay. Um, and I've also tied up with uh, Gawad Kalinga in Baseco uh, to do some oil collection. So hopefully we can set up some buying stations so uh, housewives there who are taking care of their kids, they can't really go out and work. They can set up a buying station and then they can earn from the collection of the used cooking oil. Okay. Um, so that's what Metro Manila looks like uh, on a sunny day. <laughs> Okay, so just uh, quickly going through the health effects of air pollution. Um, okay, these are some headlines. We see that Metro Manila air quality is below standards. Uh, the Secretary Pahe uh, of the Envi Secretary of Environment said that uh, they were able to bring down um, particulate matter pollutions down from 160 parts per million down to 121 parts per million just by being very strict about the emission control. But the tolerable limit for human beings is 90 parts per million. So he, he was very candid and he said, you know, if any of you have any ideas out there how to bring down air pollution, I'd like to know because we don't know what else to do. Okay? Um, and you can see there that um, 5,000 people die from pulmonary disease here in this city. Okay. Okay, uh, this is a, an article from Time Magazine and it's entitled, How the First Nine Months Shaped the Rest of Your Life. And what the article says, what the article says is that, um, sorry, skip. Okay, what the article says is basically, um, the baby, they, there's a scientist that uh, took uh, blood from the umbilical cord of the baby when they're born in Manhattan, New York. Okay, and uh, it showed that there were traces of polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. And what this is uh, a pollutant that comes out of an engine. So the, the mothers inhale it, it goes to the baby. And the baby uh, showed, the, the blood samples showed a slight DNA damage because of the polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. Meaning these babies that are born uh, they will have, be prone to cancer, they will be prone to heart disease and lung problems for the rest of their lives. You know, the, the effects are permanent. So you can imagine, that's in New York, what about here in Metro Manila? Okay. Um, so these are the pollutants that come out, some of the pollutants that come out of a um, diesel engine. We have carbon monoxide, which is toxic, nitrous oxides, hydrocarbons, uh, which is unburnt fuel, which, and, which is vaporized, sulfur oxides, and carbon dioxide. Okay? By running on vegetable oil, we're able to reduce carbon monoxide levels by over 50%. Okay? We are able to reduce nitrous oxides. The hydrocarbons are now organic. Okay? It's like walking into a kitchen and in inhaling the fumes there. That's, that's basically what you're inhaling. Um, and uh, because vegetable oil does not contain sulfur, we completely eliminate sulfur oxides. And carbon dioxide, we're now using a carbon neutral fuel. Okay? Oh, sorry, this is not that. Okay, so we know how global warming works. Um, you know, the sun's rays, most of it is reflected back into outer space. But uh, the, the carbon dioxide layer in our atmosphere um, helps contain some of that heat, so therefore, um, maintaining the temperature of our, of our planet. Okay. Uh, but what happens when you burn petroleum? You generate more carbon dioxide. So this is what we're talking about when we say the carbon footprint. Okay. So we increase the carbon dioxide layer of our planet and therefore more uh, heat, heat is, uh, uh, less heat is reflected back into outer space, more heat is retained. Therefore, it increases the temperature of our planet. Okay? And the effects, we all know what the effects are. Climate change, more intense, more frequent storms, 
unpredictable weather patterns. So that's my dad after Typhoon Millennium, which knocked down a tree in front of our house that's been there for 40 years. Okay, this La Salle, uh, we all know what happened in Ondoy. And this is in our relief operations that we did. Uh, these are coffins of children that died in the flood. Okay, and that's the list of people that died in Barangay Bagong Silangan. Um, but what happens when you use vegetable oil? Okay, um, it's, it's a carbon neutral fuel. And this is what carbon neutral means. Yeah, so you have your coconut tree, you harvest the coconuts, you extract the oil, you burn it in your engine, that still generates carbon dioxide. But what is the difference? What is the difference between the carbon dioxide from a vegetable oil and the carbon dioxide from petroleum? The difference is the carbon dioxide is reabsorbed by the trees that produce the coconuts. So our carbon dioxide is simply recycled. We're not adding it, we're not throwing it out and releasing it into the atmosphere. Okay? Um, this is an emission test uh, by my Mitsubishi Pajero. It's a 23-year-old Pajero, uh, box type, 1990 model. And uh, it's hard to see there, but um, the, the limit for old vehicles, the pollution limit for old vehicles is 2.5 parts per million with an op opacimeter. Okay? Um, here, you can see that the, the Pajero running on vegetable oil is 0.34. The limit for brand new vehicles, the limit for brand new vehicles is 0.5. So I surpassed even the brand new vehicle standards with my 23-year-old car. Okay, so we have cleaner, better smelling air, better health for motorists, and we help slow down global warming. So those are the benefits, environmental benefits. People also ask me, is it gonna slow down my car? Is it gonna you know, lose power? Is it gonna be less fuel efficient? Okay, this is what I'm experiencing. Uh, the bends you'll see outside, I'm, I'm able to hit top speeds of 140 kilometers per hour. Not bad for a 1983 bends. <laughs> okay, um, and I'm experiencing also a smoother and quieter ride. The noisy diesel sound, the engine knocking, it's now reduced to a flutter. And the reason for this is because vegetable oil is a better lubricant than diesel. So we're, we're lubricating the engine better from the inside. Okay, and I'm not experiencing any loss in torque or horsepower, so I still have that same pulling power. Um, and theoretically, we have a longer engine life. I, I say theoretically because I haven't reached the 10-year mark yet. I'm, I'm still on five years. After 10 years, we'll know if the engine keeps going. <laughs> okay? uh, but theoretically, because we're lubricating the engine better, it should last longer uh, without sacrificing fuel economy. Okay? Um, so the torque, horsepower, and fuel efficiency depends on the type of fuel you use. Um, it depends on the type of fuel you use. Uh, as we mentioned earlier, there are many types, right? There, there's coconut oil, there's palm, there's, there's olive oil, there's corn oil, okay? Uh, but the best, uh, the one with the highest heating value, or the one with the most energy content, is coconut and palm oil. And thank God, thank God our country is blessed with so many coconuts, <laughs> okay? And, and if you look in the market right now, the restaurants are really using coconut oil and palm oil. 90% of our cooking oils are coconut and palm. So really, the Philippines is the best place to apply this technology, okay? Um, but this is my problem. Uh, I'm having a hard time buying used cooking oil. Before, they used to give it out for free. Now, the price is so high. And the reason is because there are other uses of used cooking oil. There are other buyers I have to compete against. And right here, we have cooking oil recyclers. Okay? They, they get, buy the cooking oil, which is highly carcinogenic. They bleach it. And then they sell it, repack it in plastic bags, and they sell it in the public markets okay? as, as a cooking oil. Um, chicharon, fish cracker, and hopia producers. So it goes back into food. Uh, sometimes when I buy cooking oil, I try to buy the used cooking oil, they always tell me, oh, someone's buying it already, they bring it to Bulacan, and they're using it for chicharon manufacturing. You know? um, and it's chicharon, hopia, fish crackers, these are all highly absorbent. It absorbs all the oil. 
Okay. Um, it goes into animal, animal feeds. Uh, some of the food chains are actually many of the food chains that generate a lot of used cooking oil sell it to animal feed companies. Okay. So they feed it to the animals, which maybe might seem okay, but we eat those animals. Okay. Uh, then we have small biodiesel producers, candle makers. Like these are, um, you know, livelihood programs. Um, so they, they don't really affect the price of used cooking oil because they're such small volume users. Um, but waste vegetable oil or used cooking oil has a lot of harmful compounds. It has, uh, because of the um, uh, constant exposure to high temperatures, um, we have carbonyl compounds and many other carcinogenic compounds. And many times, I find the used cooking oil, uh, I have to collect the used cooking oil and they store it beside the trash. So I, I, uh, sometimes I find uh, all sorts of animals that have died inside. <laughs> and so therefore, there are many pathogens. Uh, that's why in the U.S. and in all of Europe, it's prohibited to reuse used cooking oil for food. And uh, in the US, U.S. and in the U.K., it's even banned for animals. You're not supposed to feed it to animals. And these are some pictures. Uh, this picture um, was taken in China. And you see, th that's how they segregate the, the used cooking oil from all the rotting food. They heat it in a big vat. Uh, this one I found in front of one of our famous chicken chains here in the Philippines. Um, the jeepney driver said they were going to use it for fish crackers. Uh, this one is in the Paco market where, uh, where it's close to where I used to live. And they told me, oh, that's, that's fresh cooking oil. It's coconut oil. But when you look behind the stall, you'll see all the cans of used cooking oil. And, in, and some of them says packaged for McDonald's. This is in Leon Ginto. Okay, they said it's for fish crackers as well. Okay, so really, I, I, my, one of my objectives really is to get that used cooking oil out of the food market and using it to save the environment. Uh, this is in Don Sol. So it's, it's endemic. It's all over the Philippines. It happens all over the Philippines. Any public market you go to, you'll find these bottles and plastic bags. Okay. Um, so uh, that's why I've come up with the Veggie Oil Jeepney project. And I'm hoping that we can get sponsors, uh, corporate sponsors, to donate their oil or to even sell it to us at a price that we can afford so that we can use it to save the environment, to, say, to help the Jeepney drivers uh, stabilize their income and, and to bring down air pollution. Okay? Um, and in, in return, we give them top ad, top ad advertising. So these are billboards that you find on top of Jeepneys. I'm sure you've seen them around. Um, and so the companies that will participate uh, can claim it as a CSR project. Okay. Um, they can be part of the war against uh, global warming and cutting down air pollution. So here are examples of uh, top ads on jeepneys. Uh, so they're, be they're, they're actually becoming very popular. So there's some other gaps to fill, uh, just going through some of them, the microfinance, the sponsorships, and um, legislation. Uh, we, we really need legislation to stop the practice of using used cooking oil for food. And by doing that, hopefully we can funnel the, the oil towards uh, saving the environment. Uh, and this is one of my big dreams also, because the, the technology exists. We can use a renewable fuel and we can use it for our own energy needs. Um, and my big dream is we, we discover or we develop a plant species and plant it all over the Philippines, something that will generate um, a high volume of, of vegetable oil that we can use to, to power our vehicles. Um, and right now I'm, I'm looking at the giant palm uh, and you know, we, have, we have so much idle land all over the Philippines and I, I'm hoping we can uh, plant this so that we can develop our own energy source. So when prices, fuel prices start to, to jump up, the people who get rich are the farmers. And then we're secure. We'll be secure with our energy needs. We, we don't have to rely on imported oil. Okay. Um, and that's the end of my presentation. I'd like to leave you with this uh, verse, verse from uh, Genesis. 
uh, and this is God talking to Adam and Eve. Uh, so in a way, He's talking to all of us, <laughs> all of mankind. God blessed them and told them, multiply and fill the earth and subdue it. Be masters over the fish and birds and all the animals. So God gave us this beautiful planet. It's really up to us to take care of it. Thank you.